Oh, um, there we go. Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Kristen. I'm the executive director at the center, and we're here with our um, spotted turtle ambassador, Percy. Um, and we're excited to do morning meeting with you guys. So um, if you're just tuning in, be sure to say hello, where you're tuning in from. And Kate is with us too. Hi, um, everybody. So she'll um, be helping to field questions. And um, we are down at our vernal pool. So hopefully we have good service. We can move if needed, but, um, but we thought we would uh, go live right from Percy's habitat this morning so yeah so to get started um we have seven different species of turtles in maine and new hampshire and um spotted turtles are one of them we've got painted turtles spotted wood turtles snapping musk turtles landings um and so our spotted turtles are actually threatened um in Maine. Um, so they can be more rare. Um, their habitat is this vernal pool. Um, so they are what's called an obligate vernal pool species. Um, so they do need vernal pools um, for their habitat in order to survive. So other um, species of turtles or amphibians that um, might be okay with regular ponds um, or even wooded wetlands are called facultative species if they use vernal pools, but these guys really do need um, vernal pools to survive. I want to say hi to everybody out there. Kelly Goodale from South Portland, hi. Rebecca, hi. We're so, Plymouth, New Hampshire, awesome. And Xander, um, East Machias, Maine with Zoe, that's great. Uh, Elise, hi, and Robin, we're so glad you're joining us. And Brendan, age 10, oh, so we, we, we do love him too. He's just yeah. so cute. Um, I was going to offer him, I know you guys often say, um, ask if we can feed, feed guys um, in front of you. Oops, I should have gotten maybe a bigger bigger bowl but didn't know if he would go for those mealworms um yeah so vernal pools let's see hi bud he's like no it's too fun to walk around here <laughs> he's so excited um vernal pools are a special habitat they um they're like this a depression in the forest um and they fill up with spring um snow melt and He's like, he's like, I'm out of here. here. I'm out of here. Um, they fill up with spring snow melt and, um, but they completely dry up in the summertime. So they cannot host any, um, fish species, which makes them a nursery for, um, our wood frog and spotted turtle or spotted salamander eggs. And so our, um, spotted turtles love living in between these vernal pools. So they, they really do live um, mostly in the forest and they go between vernal pools and then to, they do move to wooded wetlands when their vernal pool dries up um, in the summertime. <laughs> um, he is, Percy came to us because unfortunately and illegally he was taken from the wild and made a pet. Um, so he doesn't have a fear of people obviously or um, predators which would make him vulnerable in the wild. Hi, Kim um, Smith. Hi, Kim. Hi, Ryan. Elaine, greeting from South Portland. Brendan from Dover. <laughs> Naomi, we're so happy you're here. From Rhode Island, wonderful. Awesome. Great. Yeah, so Percy lives with us in Sanctuary. He has an indoor enclosure in the um, wintertime, but he'll be heading outside um, for spring, summer, and fall. And um, our goal right now, we're getting starting to get in a lot of turtles. Um, turtles move from their water source um, to their nesting ground um, in May and June in big numbers. And they're heading um, usually across the road. So if you see a turtle um, this time of year, it, you know, if it's not a well-traveled road, um, you can certainly help um help the turtle across the road just by standing behind them and 
scooching them across. Snapping turtles will also often stand and turn and become defensive. So you'll want to help them across um, by getting them on a piece of cardboard or a towel and pulling them across. Or um, if you're able, you can, um, for snapping turtles, you can hold them in the back, hold them upright like this, and then escort them across. Um, little guys like this, you know, I usually, you just want to pick them up like that. <laughs> um, so making sure you have a firm grasp, two, um, two fingers on top, two on the bottom, and move them across in the direction that they were facing. Um, there's no such thing as an orphaned turtle. Um, turtles are completely on their own as soon as they hatch out of the egg. So you don't have to save or rescue or bring home um, a small uh, hatchling turtle because they're not orphaned. They are already equipped with everything they need to be um, out in the wild. So really just helping these guys across the road in the direction they're facing is the best thing that you can do for turtles. Um, Elise, so good to see you guys, yeah, everybody. Sue, uh, Wendy from Massachusetts, hi. And Hello, then good morning. Brennan. <laughs> Yeah, so what is Percy's favorite food? Yep, so these guys in the wild eat a lot of like mosquito larvae. Yay! Um, so when they're swimming around these pools, especially when they wake up out of hibernation, um, they're eating a ton of larvae. They also can eat um, some uh, snails, fairy shrimp, um, even uh, wood some frog eggs or salamander eggs they can eat those as well um, but he loves insects that's definitely their um their favorite food so i didn't know if he would go for these because he's these are mealworms awesome Yeah. Can you see? Yeah. Can you guys see he's eating? I'm trying to be quiet because he's in the zone. <laughs> he's right in the now. zone. Look at Percy giving him some mealworms. <laughs> Elaine, yes, Good that's job, important buddy. fact to learn. Yes, turtles are not orphans. Absolutely. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> and also, turtles, wild turtles, do not make good pets. Um, Look, look at this habitat, you know, it's like they'll have um, sunlight and wild foods and they can travel in the moss and on the forest floor in between um, pools and wooded wetlands. It's like they can go to sleep under the stars and wake up in the sunlight. Um, they do not want to be in a tank um, for the rest of their lives. That's really sad and it's definitely a reason that we see turtles at the center sometimes so especially for threatened and endangered species um we need all the wild animals um all the wild turtles we can have um to stay out in the wild so you know if we love if we love turtles and we love wild animals then we want them um to stay wild um these guys like i said are threatened they're endangered in some other states um I believe federally they are listed as endangered. Um, they can live uh, up to 50 years. They typically live for 35 to 40 years. Um, they don't, they're not able to lay eggs, so they don't reach sexual maturity until they're eight to 10 years old. Um, so that means that they have to avoid predators. Let's get a little. Help you out, buddy. <laughs> a little flake on his <laughs> eye. Um, they have to avoid predators and um, cars. Oh, this is a great shot. Awesome. You, anybody has questions? Um, until let they're us know. eight or ten years old, until they can finally lay eggs. So, for these guys, wood turtles, blanding turtles, for them um, to not be able to even reproduce until they survive. Um, eight to ten years is is um, a, an issue for them and and before we had um, roads and houses and you know kind of all those introduced challenges um, it made sense for them to live a longer life um, 
and then produce their eggs. Um, but now that poses just an additional challenge. Um, you know, if you do see a turtle in the wild this season that has a fractured shell, you might think to yourself that, um, that there's nothing you can do for it, but um, shells, turtle shells are made out of bone. And um, just like a doctor can fix our fractures, um, we can fix and we do fix many um, fractured shells for every season. Um, so we set the bone, um, we put brackets on either side of the fracture and we can set the bone and then release the turtle back into the wild once they're completely healed. Um, another thing is if it's a female traveling with eggs, you know, and we can't um, fix her because maybe she has too much internal trauma or paralysis, um, we can actually extract her eggs and then release, um, we incubate the eggs and then we try to release the babies back to the wild and release them back to the same spot that mom came from. So. Don't give up hope. If you see one fractured, definitely please call um, us or you know your local wildlife rehabilitator that has a permit for treating turtles. So the spots, um, obviously that's why they're called spotted turtles, all those spots all over their shell. If you look at the water in the vernal pool, um, it's pretty dark because it's in the forest. So looking over the top, and then there's um, pollen and leaves and um, seeds and all sorts of things floating on top of the water. Um, so those that dark shell with those spots actually gives them camouflage for um, their habitat, which is really cool. Awesome. Yeah. Elena, hi. Susan, thank you so much. Lynn. How you guys doing? Diane, thank you. He is very handsome turtle. Amy, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. If you guys have any other questions, please let us know. And so he's showing us his claws. Um, so these guys are a semi-aquatic species. Um, so our uh, aquatic species have, you know, full-on webbed feet like our painted turtles front and back. Um, he's got more claws, a little less webbing in the front, but you can see all of his great webbing in the back. Um, so, you know, just looking at adaptations when we come upon turtles can tell us if, if it's a terrestrial turtle, um, if they don't have any webbing at all, or, you know, full-on webbing like our painteds. Um, we can see that they always live in the water, and then um, these guys are semi-aquatic, so he's got um, good webbing and little flippers in the back and then um, more claws for climbing and digging um, in the front. You can see Perry's got some good little chubs. <laughs> He's happy and well fed. Um, you wouldn't usually see a little bit of chub on wild turtles. Um, it's much harder to make a living out in the wild. Um, they actually have this extra protection. You can see he's got almost a turtle neck. Um, so that's, that's extra skin and folds there. So if he were afraid, he could pull himself all the way inside. His head would be completely protected, um, by this extra collar of skin that he's got there. And we got some more questions. Melissa, how awesome. big do they get? And does he live in the pond or inside? So, um, Percy is, um, he was made tame, unfortunately. So, He's not afraid of predators, which means that he could get attacked very quickly if he lived in the wild. Um, so he does live with us in an enclosure. During the winter time, he's inside because um, these guys would be hibernating. But um, in the spring, summer, and fall, um, we have an outdoor enclosure that our turtles live in so great questions great questions um so they live in verna pools yep it's from zoe what do they do when the pool dries up yeah so they will move they do they do move a lot so turtle moving season really is from like well with the changing climate it could be from march through october so they move when they come out of hibernation to their water source they move during nesting season and then in the summertime, these guys, these vernal pool species, move in between pools and wooded wetlands. So they might go to um, a swell in a stream in the forest or like a, a beaver where beavers are making embankments and they might hang there. Um, 
They do go to wooded wetlands that stay wet um, throughout the season that don't dry up because they've got an ephemeral or, or sorry, a permanent um, stream or water source to those types of wetlands um, or even small beaver ponds as well. So they do move a lot. Um, some of our turtles also in the peak of, um, of heat. So, um, you know, think about in July or even August, if we've got like a week of 90 degree weather, um, in a row and things are really dry and hot, they actually will dig and burrow, um, under the cool earth and stay there as the, they estivate, um, for a period of time as well. So they've got a few different things that they do once their um, vernal pools are dried up. Awesome question. Great questions. Hey, Sarah. Hello, good morning, <laughs> Hey, Sarah. Sarah. Um, Colleen, love what you do. Thank you so much. We, uh, we love it too. Um, if you'd like to donate, we are a nonprofit. Please go to our website um, and donate. We are not federally funded, um, no state or federal funding. So we love um, your support. Uh, Brendan, if you live in New Hampshire, can we still call you if you have a hurt animal? Yes. Yeah. Great question. Great question. So um, for, especially for birds, we have a federal permit, um, but we are licensed um, to take those wild animals. And you know, if it's like a rabies vector species that can't cross state lines, we can put you in touch with um, someone closer to you. Um, but we are a regional facility, so we treat up to 2,500 injured and orphaned wild animals every year. Um, and, uh, you know, Portsmouth is um, 15 minutes away, so um, we're often the closest um, rehabilitator, depending on uh, where you're calling from. So, great question. Hi, Carolyn. <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. Hey, and good Jason, morning. good morning. Here, we'll offer cutie pie some more See of these earthworms or um mealworms and awesome questions really great questions any other questions yeah so um these guys do hibernate um or brewmate it's called for turtles um slowing everything down um these guys are usually under mossy embankment so if we take a look around at all the kind of moss and extra earth around um, that's where they'd be hibernating. They are often also one of the first ones to wake up. Oh, he's going for them again, I think. Going? Nope. <laughs> Just taking a little dip. Um, yeah, and they've got this beautiful kind of orange coloring on their skin, on their front legs. Um, Percy is a male, and um, the parts of the shell, this is called the plasteron, and the top part is called the carapace, and so for spotted turtles, if you guys see, he's got a little curve there. Um, that tells us that he's a male. It has to do with their reproduction, um, and so the females would actually be totally flat. There's, um, there's where he goes to the bathroom. I know kids often ask about that. <laughs> um, so just the same as us, it's just um, positioned on his tail and his parts are inside. Um, he's got his little legs there. How far would a female travel to lay eggs? Great question. That's a great question. That's awesome. It depends on, um, on the resources that are available. So they have to travel farther if a road has been built right next to the vernal pool or the wetland. And so all that beautiful sandy upland soil that used to be right next to the pond might now be gone because there's a road there. So that's when they've got to travel um, farther to, to lay eggs. But um, the biggest movement of, of these species is um, really like that person asked earlier about that question of what do they do when the vernal pool dries up? Um, they don't need to travel usually as far to lay their eggs, but these guys are traveling much farther um, in between their spots when things dry up in the summertime. But our painted turtles, um, because so many roads and snapping turtles have been built right next to ponds um, and kind of over ancestral nesting grounds, they end up traveling across roads a lot more during nesting time. 
great question. Great question. Chuck, hi. Hi from Rhode Island. We're Good so glad morning, you're here. Chuck. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't he adorable? Oh. He's so cool. Yeah. So our goal is always to get animals back to the wild, obviously. Um, unfortunately, um, sometimes because they've been made tame or with permanent injuries, they can't be released back to the wild. Um, Percy and our other reptile ambassadors are going to live in our nature center and in our new building. Um, and we've got some people working on new tanks and stands for them. So once that's up and running, you guys will be able to come see Percy in his little turtle terrarium habitat um, and learn more about these species, which is really cool. We're excited about that. And uh, like Kate said, we appreciate donations. Um, it is, it's a lot of work to provide medical care. Anyone who's... Um, been to the doctors lately or um, had a loved one go through medical treatment um, you know these guys have fractures and eye trauma and head trauma and need bones set and pinned and um, you know need to be looked at by optometrists or um, you know using specialized equipment and medication and because they have no owners um, because wildlife is really all of our responsibility um, we run completely off of donations so we really appreciate that can you let him walk around? Yeah. <laughs> Elena, there he is. There he goes. <laughs> Cutie pie. It's just like amazing to me how they take these long journeys. You know, it's like a stick. It looks like a small hill for him. He's like, I'll head right to the wetland. I know. He knows where he's going. Yeah. He knows exactly where he's <laughs> supposed to be. Hi, Chuck. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're so glad you love our broadcast mm -hmm. and that you're getting to know our ambassadors. Don't go too far, <laughs> <Where is he? laughs> Can't lose you. We love you too much. <laughs> he's so funny. He's probably going to turn around. Yeah, yeah he's going to turn around. <laughs> there he goes. Um, so all of, our, um, all of our species that we treat... They all have different temperaments, you know, depending on how they hunt or where they live. Um, and then, of course, between in, among individuals, they all have different. Oh, this is kind of cool, you guys. Um, is it a bone? Two bones. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Looks like a radius and ulna um, of a small bird, maybe. Interesting. Or actually, is that a? Could be a mouse. Fascinating. Oh, there's more. Might have been one of our ambassadors eating out here. <laughs> There's a little vertebrae. Wow. Oh yeah, look at that. I hope you guys are out exploring as we're in the middle of this quarantine looking closely at things. There goes Percy. Discovery. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh yeah, look, there's another vertebrae right here. Fascinating. Wow. Someone probably sat on this rock and, and had, had a, a snack. Little snack. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Huh. Just look at that. Hi, buddy. All right, unless there's any other questions, we'll sign off for the day. Um, so, in short, spotted turtles, very special species. How you can help turtles, um, you know, help them across the road in the direction they're facing, but also please um, become aware of where development is going to be proposed in your town. Um, attending your planning board meetings, being in touch with your conservation commission. It's not that, um, you know, people obviously need homes and need to travel on roads. So it's not that, um, you know, it's not realistic for no development to happen. Um, but there are smarter ways of doing things um, and smarter places to put um, new homes and things like that. So conservation developments, um, avoiding vernal pools and wetlands and um, critically, um, you know, places where critically endangered species live in our towns um, and voting and attending those meetings is really the, the best way that we can make systemic change for, um, for species that suffer from habitat loss. So unless there's any other questions. Rebecca, we'll... thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone.
so fun. Thanks, guys. All right. Hope everyone has a great day. Be well. Bye.